Hello, my name is Maryam Katami. I'm an assistant professor in the Royal College of Business at the University of North Texas. This video is a brief overview of my collaborative work with Dr. John Stocker from Mays Business School and Dr. Mark Lolly from the IEC department, both at Texas A&M University. The paper is titled How a Dedicated Post-Discharge Unit Can Reduce Hospital Congestion and Costs and is recently published in the Distance Sciences Journal. Let's consider a situation where the emergency department in a hospital operates at or above the capacity, which is the case in 90% of the emergency departments in the U.S. Some of these patients need to be admitted into the inpatient units or hospital wards. The sooner they can be transferred, the better given the overcrowding in the emergency department. But inpatient beds are not necessarily available. In fact, the primary reason for ED boarding is inpatient bed unavailability. So any effort to improve access to inpatient beds is highly valued by hospitals. A question that comes to mind is, is there any unnecessary patient to stay in the hospital? And surprisingly, the answer is yes. When the patients are ready for discharge, they might be discharged to their homes or depending on the patient's conditions, uh, up to 60% of them are transferred to post-acute care facilities where they will receive a lower level of care than the acute care they received in the hospital. So this transition could be challenging for several reasons. Let's say miscommunication between post-acute care and acute care facilities, or because of the limited capacity of the post-acute care facilities, or because these facilities cannot meet the patient's needs, which typically happens when the patient has several health complications. In these situations, the patients will stay in the hospital for an extended period of time while medically ready for discharge. According to the literature, 41% of unnecessary hospital time is related to patients waiting for transfer to skilled nursing facilities. So in this paper, we wanted to see if there is a better way to manage the non-medical stays of these patients and more efficiently use the highly expensive inpatient beds. An idea that came to our mind was, Mm, what about creating a post-discharge unit, let's call it PDU, for these patients? When we first proposed this idea, the practitioners in our partner hospital thought it might be expensive to create a unit for patients who are already ready for discharge. We still wanted to use um, mathematical programming and computational methods to uh, evaluate this idea. So we used the stochastic optimization to formulate the problem, and we solved our model using real data from our partner hospital, which is a large hospital in Texas. And then uh, we used a simulation model to see how the optimal policy performs uh, when there's more uncertainty in the problem. And here are our key findings. First, an optimally sized PDU can be financially advantageous for hospitals if at least 4% of the patients are transferred to post-acute care facilities, which is counterintuitive. Increasing the inpatient beds is not a financially advantageous solution, which is expected because PDU beds are less equipped compared to inpatient beds, nurse to patient ratio is higher, and physician coverage is lower. And uh, not only increasing the inpatient beds is more expensive, but also the patient flow improvement is very similar to that when a PDU is built. Last but not least, even for higher PDU costs, a PDU is still optimal in hospitals with a lower transfer ratio to post-acute care, but that's not necessarily true if the transfer ratio is higher. What does it mean? Let's say 15% of the patients uh, of a hospital are discharged to post-acute care facilities. Then even if the PDU costs are very high, still creating a PDU is financially advantageous for the hospital. But let's say 60% of the patients are transferred to post-acute care facilities. Then these hospitals might need to consider alternative solutions like subcontracting with post-acute care facilities or even having their own post-acute care facility or a combination of these uh, solutions along with creating a post-discharge unit. In the end, I would like to acknowledge healthcare professionals and the performance improvement team in our partner hospital, architects who provided information on PDU costs, and editorial board and review team of the Decision Sciences Journal for providing constructive comments that helped us improve the quality of the paper significantly. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you find this work uh, interesting and impactful.